Hello guys, it's Victor again, coming to you from Cologne, Germany. So today I'll be discussing five culture shocks that I experienced here in Europe. So I started living in Europe in 2017. First, I lived in the UK, then I moved to Germany. And in a few weeks, I'll be returning to the UK for my um, PhD program. So let's go straight into the video as I share my experiences about um, my culture shock. So shock number one, it's a um, public display of um, affection, PDA. I think in Europe I've noticed that um, couples or lovers or friends do not have any problem um, showing love to each other in public. And when I say showing love, I don't just mean pecks on the cheek or light um, hugs or things like that. But this is um, intense love making, not sex in itself, but intense love making. That's um, kissing and snuggling and cuddling and you know smooshing and things like that all in the full glare of the of the public so one particular experience i remember is um, i was taking the bus from campus from um, london kingsway road to um, london tower bridge and um, this young couple came to sit in front of me and they were just all over each other hugging and cuddling and kissing and i was i was just right behind them so i didn't know where to put my face as a newbie, so to say, um, a Nigerian international student coming to the UK for the first time, I didn't know how to react because they were just all over themselves and I was just right behind them. So I just glued my face to the window and tried to ignore what was happening. That was quite a, an awkward experience, but it's, I think I'm getting used to seeing um, scenes like that because almost everywhere you put your face in Europe, you see somebody kissing somebody or hugging or snogging or doing something. Or the other things that from where i come from are considered borderline to full-blown and um, sexual um, activities but here it's considered normal and mm -hmm. and it's okay usually I, i'm not saying we do not snog or kiss in nigeria where i come from but most of those things are, are done indoors uh, most of the time but here you see young um, lovers old lovers and different categories of lovers showing affection in intense ways without any any shame or or any any fear of reproach in the public so shock number two is the culture of smoking and drinking i think europe particularly has the same smoking problem i think i do not mean to sound judgmental but i think it's getting a little bit too much if you go around the streets the major cause of um, trash on the street is this bottle of um, cigarettes so you see them littered all over the street and then um, these streets are usually cleaned daily but you go there the next day you see the same thing and smoking is widely practiced both in the uk where i stayed and also in germany and even in other countries have other european countries are visited even though there are some zones they call smoke free zones but it's it's a common practice. Even on campuses, you see both professors and students smoking, and I think um, you should care about their health a little bit more, I think. It's, um, I know I don't want to sound judgmental, but I think excessive smoking is not good for the health. So you get it everywhere, and it's... I'm not, and I'm not saying it's not um, smoking. People do not smoke in Nigeria. People do smoke in Nigeria. But I think the, the level of smoking in Europe is just is just something else. Drinking as well. Okay, so I noticed that um, alcohol is far cheaper here in Europe than in, in Nigeria, probably in Africa. But I've not gone to all countries in Africa, so I can't speak for other African countries. But comparing it particularly to Nigeria, I think alcohol is cheaper here in Europe. And probably that's why you get lots of people drinking. So you see young adults, full-grown adults, old and um, different categories of people I'm drinking. As a matter of fact, we had a pub. So if you don't know what a pub is, is the, the beer parlor, as we call it in Nigeria. A beer parlor at the middle of campus in my um, university in, um, in London. So although it opens mostly in the evenings. So if you get stressed academically, you can always go in there and have a pint of beer. And of course, here in Germany, they take their beer very seriously. They have competitions um, among different states about who has the better beer. So there's like a rivalry between Cologne and those sort of about um, whose beers um, taste better. So there's this drinking and smoking culture, which is, well, for drinking, I don't also want to sound judgmental, but I think 
alcohol also has a, an advert um, effect on, on the liver, especially if it's done excessively. So whatever you do, try to be moderate and care about your health. So shock number three, it's about food in um, Europe. So it's not very difficult to get African food in Europe because the African shops um, are on both in London and here in Germany, in Cologne, there's also a number of shops here. So the problem is not actually getting African food, but I think that food does not taste the same way they taste back home. Even meat, the meat doesn't taste the same way. I don't know what is missing actually in the European meats. I think the meat in, in Africa it has more flavor and it's more juicy. And here it's just, it has the taste, but still, you when you eat it, you know there's something there's something missing. Another thing is the fruits. The fruits here they look very appetizing, very fresh, very big. And but when you when you when you eat them, you 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 find out that um, like the flavor is missing. There's you know you eat like um, a banana or pineapple, and I'm like I think there's something missing in those fruits compared to the juicy, you know, tasty um, fruits I was used to. So I do not know the the reason for this. It might be um, genetic engineering or because of their climate or something. But their fruits here are not as tasty as what I've experienced um, back home. So the fourth point I would like to share is, um, I think you know this already, the weather. So in summer, for instance, the sun can stay up there till 9 p.m., 10 p.m. So imagine it is still very bright by 10 p.m. So it's, 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 it's a little bit ridiculous for me, especially when I came here initially and I had problems sleeping on time because I can't sleep when it's, when it's still bright. Most times I have to cover my, my window with thick blinds to make sure I shut out all the lights before I'm able to sleep. And of course in winter, by 3 p.m. it's already getting dark and you're like, oh my God, what is happening? And your brain starts shutting down gradually, telling you to go to sleep, even though it's just 3 p.m. In the, in the afternoon. So the weather here, yeah, it's a bit problematic, especially if you come newly. And then, of course, sunshine. You get sunshine just in summer for just a few weeks, and then I actually miss the African sunshine because, um, you know, weather is also weather also affects our, our mood and our, and our drive. So most times, we wake up in the morning and you see the, the sky is grey and things look boring. The next thing is just to probably go back to bed and you know cover yourself with a duvet. But in Africa, the sun is always out there on your face, pushing you to move out and to, to get active. So it could be a little bit depressing at times when the weather is not good. So yeah, weather is a big deal here in, um, here in Europe. And then um, shock number five is um, regarding academics. I see the push for um, university education as stronger in um, Nigeria, where I come from, than here in Europe. What I mean is that most parents push their children to get degrees in Africa and they feel the more university education you acquire, um, the likely, the more likely you are to get a good job. And Although if it's, it's not necessarily true because there are some people who actually get good jobs and are able to make it in life without going to the university. But there's still this notion of go to university, get a good degree and then you get a good job. It's not so much here in um, in Europe, especially here in Germany. I think it's because they have alternatives. So after a high school diploma, I think it's some people are good enough to get a good job. Probably they just do one um, skill acquisition program or the other, and they are good enough to earn a comfortable amount of money to cater for themselves and their families. And I think it's not probably the same in in Africa. Although vocational training is something that is coming up gradually, but it's not given the same. Um, the same importance as a degree program, for instance. So here, you also even notice here in Germany, the the, the students, the German students, do not take things as um, as um, as as seriously as international students. I do not mean they are not serious students, but they are more relaxed and more balanced when you see them on campus. But international students are often the ones running from pillar to post to make sure things are done. You see them spending hours in libraries, and but German students are a little bit more relaxed, probably because they think. What's the point? You know, we can always have fun and study at the same time. So that drive to acquire a degree and to move on and, you know, things like that. I see it mostly in international students, both not just international students from Africa, but also those from Asia. They are, lots, they are, very, they are very active when it comes to pursuing degrees and um, academic excellence. So Germany is like, okay, we, we still pursue academic excellence, but not at the expense of our private time of um, relaxing and we don't need to it's not a do or die affair. I think that is quite healthy. It gives you a more balanced um, view of life and apart from academia, there are other things you could do. Apart, 
in fact, the university is not for everybody, and I believe in that as well. So if you think it's just our universities, are, our countries actually are wired differently when it comes to the labor market. So I put a lot of emphasis on acquiring degrees, and here is more of a skill acquisition. So that's it, guys, my five um, shockers, culture shockers, when I came initially to Europe. I think by now I'm already getting used to most of them. It's no longer a big deal. So when I see some of these things, I'm like, oh, yeah, it was shocking years ago, but now I think I've gotten used to them. But there are some things you don't get used to, like the weather. You don't even... Even Europeans complain about their weather, so not to talk of um, an African. So that weather, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's just to adapt and see what um, what we can do in spite of the weather. So that's it, guys. Until the next one, stay safe and stay inspired. Bye-bye.